Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick video about something that I think all residents should be practicing more often on their ultrasound or POCUS exams. This is something that I only recently learned about on my ICU rotation, but honestly, I feel like this would be such a useful thing to add to your repertoire and really be able to help you a lot when quickly trying to figure out if a patient has a DVT or PE or not. And basically it's what's called a two-point ultrasound. There is very different variations of this, a two-point DVT ultrasound, a three-point DVT ultrasound, and and then you have the like full scan up and down the leg, which is like the formal ultrasound. Uh, but really, a lot of the studies showed that a two-point DVT ultrasound is actually pretty good as like an initial screening evaluation for DVT. Think about how many times you have a patient where you're kind of considering whether or not you have higher or lower suspicion for a DVT or PE, and you're not sure if you want to start anticoagulation quite yet right away. You know, identifying non-compressibility on a point-of-care ultrasound would be such an easy little test to do especially because all of us are starting to use point of care ultrasound much more frequently. And this is something that I think we don't focus on as much. We tend to focus a lot more on the cardiac exam and the lung exam, lung sliding, stuff like that. But DVT ultrasound could be a very useful thing to add to your repertoire. So one thing that I really like doing is going to this website, POCUS 101. This is honestly a god tier website in terms of giving lots of guides on how to do all of the ultrasound exams properly. And you can see they have one on DVT ultrasound made easy. Uh, and so first off, they go over some of the indications for doing a DVT ultrasound. And then kind of talking about, first of all, you wanna put the patient in a frog leg position. This is really gonna help bring the veins closer to the surface. It also helps distend them a little bit and make them a little bit easier to, um, to visualize. And then we're gonna start with the linear ultrasound probe. And for the two-point DVT ultrasound, if you read through this article, you're really going to be focusing on two main points. Uh, here's some important kind of uh, landmarks you should be able to identify. But the two points you're going to be looking at is going to be the common femoral vein, where it bifurcates into the great saphenous vein. And you're going to also look at the popliteal vein, and those are going to be your two points. And so for this first point of the common femoral vein and the saphenous vein, uh, what you're really looking for is for uh, this kind of Mickey Mouse sign. So you have this Mickey Mouse, you got your saphenous vein here, the common femoral vein, and then the common femoral artery over here. And here is a, basically, once you find this structure, you're going to start compressing so that the artery slightly uh, gets compressed, but the veins should be fully compressed. And then obviously, if you have a clot in there, you may potentially visualize a clot in the middle of there, or you're not going to have compressibility of the veins there. And that will be um, kind of a good screening for if there's a clot. The next biggest landmark is going to be the popliteal vein, so right behind the knee. And uh, you're going to basically be looking for compressibility above the uh, popliteal artery. So uh, what they really want you to remember is pop on top. So the popliteal vein is on top of the popliteal artery. And you're just going to scan uh, a one to two centimeter uh, above the popliteal vein and then down the popliteal vein. And that's going to give you a good area to test the compressibility and see if there's any clots present. I, what I love about this website is they have all these kind of real-time images that can tell you uh, or show you what an example of an abnormal ultrasound would look like. So here's some examples where you see a direct clot. This one is just a huge clot blocking the middle. Uh, this one's a mobile clot that's kind of moving around in there with some turbulence. And then, then they show some uh, examples of non-compressible veins. So you see here, you have the common femoral artery here, and then it's they push on it and it starts to collapse a little bit, but you don't see any compression of the uh common femoral vein. Same thing with the popliteal vein here. So they are actually fully, remember, pop on top. So they are compressing the popliteal artery, and yet the popliteal vein is not compressing at all. So that is highly suspicious for a DVT. There's a couple of different techniques like augmentation with color Doppler, um, but th it's not really as recommended as just doing compressibility. And uh, what I really like is they have this super, super good YouTube video that's linked right here. Uh, and it is by POCUS 101. And so it's, it's by their own people. And you can see that, uh, you know, this is such a great test because it's just going to take 3.5 to 2 to th uh, 3.5 minutes or so and just check a couple points. And I highly recommend all of you guys uh, just watch this video really quickly. It's a very interesting watch as well. You give some visual examples of how to do it. And here they're showing the first point where you're going to be doing the bifurcation of the common femoral vein and the great saphenous vein. And you're going to see just in a second, here's that Mickey Mouse appearance with the great saphenous vein here. Uh, this is the common femoral vein. And then this is the artery right here. Next they're going to be sliding down the femoral vein and just kind of uh, looking a little bit, uh, you know, more distally. 
So this is what that view is going to look like. You have the superficial femoral vein, which is actually a deep vein. And then you have the deep femoral vein. And you can see both of them are going to be collapsible. And then finally, you're going to look at the popliteal vein. Remember, pop on top. And this is what a normal exam is going to look like. You're compressing, popliteal artery stays patent, and then the popliteal vein will collapse like this. And what I really love about this uh, one is this video, again, it's going to show you these examples of abnormal findings. So this is one with a clot in the middle of it. Here's an example of the artery on top and then the non-compressible vein on the bottom. And then finally, an abnormal example of the popliteal vein. So again, pop is on top, so popliteal vein is on top, and you can see the artery is compressing, but the popliteal vein is not compressing. So anyways, I just wanted to quickly make this video because this is something I only really kind of learned about a few weeks ago, and it surprised me with how easy it was to check for DVTs uh, just with a simple two-point DVT ultrasound. And so I highly encourage everybody to start incorporating this into some of their POCUS exams, especially when they're suspicious of a potential DVT. And I think this is really going to, you know, the more you do it, the more you can compare yourself with a formal ultrasound and see if you're doing it correctly or not and uh, really get a good sense for if you're seeing clots or not. And what I think is super strong about this um, you know, technique is that uh, there is a comparison between two-point ultrasonography plus D-dimer versus whole leg ultrasonography, which again may take like 24 hours or even longer to get done. And it showed that the two diagnostic strategies are equivalent when used for the management of symptomatic outpatients with suspected DVT of the lower extremities. You know, I think you do have to take some of these findings with a grain of salt because um, here, uh, this study showed that resident performed two point compression ultrasound is inadequate for diagnosis of DVT in the critically ill. Um, but uh, this one was basically, they were trained in a two hour module for checking for DVTs. And then they found that the sensitivity for finding DVTs uh, above the knee was 63% with a specificity of 97%. Um, which is honestly not that bad. I mean, sensitivity, uh, you know, what I'm really looking for is uh, the specificity here, because if I see a clot there, then I'm going to know 100% that there, there's a DVT there and I can start anticoagulation. Um, so sensitivity, I'm still going to get that formal ultrasound. I'm not going to like not get that formal ultrasound. But what you're really saving is that uh, time from order of a formal ultrasound to a radiologist read averaged 14.7 hours. So even if you've got a somewhat lower sensitivity, if you get a pretty good specificity, this can still be a very, very useful test that shaves off hours from the formal workup. Anyways, thought I would just bring that to your guys' attention. Definitely try it out next time you're walking around with your butterfly or your ultrasound. And hopefully this is something useful to add to your repertoire. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.